I am back today with one of these little mini PCs. This is the Camry E1, little Intel based thing. Let me go ahead and get this set up and we'll uh, take a look at it. As this boots up, one thing that I'm not entirely thrilled about with it, let me get this USB-C cable out of the way, is it does not have USB-C ports. It has USB-A. So yeah, keep that in mind. Most of my modern keyboards use USB-C now. I guess I did some updates there when I set it up and I haven't let them finish yet. That was pretty quick actually. So while we get into the system here, this is the Camry SNX E1 mini PC. It's about 200 bucks. It's a nice little, little computer, comes with Windows 11 already on it. Pretty small, about four inches by four inches by like 1.8 in, 1.18 inches or something. It does have a VESA bracket. That's pretty standard with all these. So it has the two USB 3.0 and it has two USB 2.0. It has an HDMI and then I think uh, it's got a DP on it. So you could do two, do this, two displays. It does have your normal um, gigabit ethernet on the back as well as Bluetooth and dual band Wi-Fi. So this has one of those 12th gen Adler Lake in 97s in it. They're not the greatest thing, but they work great for what they're intended for. Let me open DXDIAG here. Oops, I put a typo in it, my bad. Don't mind me. So who's gonna use this? You're not really gonna wanna game on one of these, but we are going to try some games because I think it's a good little test for these things. But you would be buying this if you just wanted something to do some like office work, stream stuff, you know, stuff like that. This one specifically has a 512 gigabyte SSD and 16 gigabytes of DDR RAM. So yeah, it comes with Windows 11. It sees that in 97, like I said. It's got it at two gigahertz in DXDIAG. I think they claim that it'll do three something, so maybe it has some kind of boost. Just something to uh, be mindful of there. Some pros and cons about it. Pretty cheap. It does come with quite a bit of RAM and storage. It'll handle any of your browsing and office stuff that you're gonna do. Some of the cons, yeah, I don't think you can upgrade the RAM. And the Bluetooth version is not the newest. So there is that. It's definitely not suitable for AAA games. I know it's gonna run Quake probably. We're not gonna try Cyberpunk. I put it on here, but it took quite a long time to actually install it. So let's jump into Universe Sandbox. So we finally got into Universe Sandbox. It did take like a minute and a half. Again, you know, you're not really gonna be playing a lot of games with this thing. I'm sure it'll run Minecraft fine. Normally I test Minecraft on these Outer Lake ones and runs fine. So I'm not even gonna bother on this one. Let me get out of the guide. Go get my tools open here. Uh, let me kill the lights so you can actually see the screen a little bit better. I used to screw around in this a bunch. And when my friend got his HTC Vive, that should date what I'm saying quite a long time ago, like doing this and that was really fun. Yeah. Zoom out some here. I don't remember how to stop the motion. Oh yeah, the pause, duh. I'll zoom out and resume. I handle the simulations in here pretty well. So let's go ahead and just zoom out a little here. Maybe add something with more gravity. Give me some stars. Let's go with Sirius B. Oh yeah, there we go. That gave it a little something to chew on. Now it's stuttering. So I just dropped three Sirius Bs and we just created a nebula. That'll take a minute to catch up as it expands. Oh yeah, there it goes, taking out everything. Now we're headed out to Saturn. I, I, I'm really surprised at how well it's it's handling this and it's not stuttering too bad. There goes Saturn here in a second. Oh, yep, Saturn just lit up. Oh, man, I'm gonna get sucked into this again, aren't I? I will say it was really quiet during that. So yeah, like you just come on here and it works pretty well. I really don't want so much to say, like this is a nice little um, office computer if you just need something. You're sending your kid to college, you don't want them to game, send this with them because they're going to be able to screw around with some games. They're not going to be able to play AAA stuff, so they're not going to like get sucked into it or anything. You could probably emulate a lot with this. I imagine it would handle just about everything. So you could use it for something like that. 
hook it up to your TV and put a Plex client on it. I don't think you'd want to host your Plex content on here, but you should be able to display on the TV just fine. And other than that, yeah, it's just a nice little quiet Intel PC. Um, I like these little ones because they're usually 12 volt, so I can run them off my lithium iron phosphate batteries. I'm an amateur radio operator, if you don't know that. And they make fun little computers for taking out into the field. You can get one of those little uh, USB monitors or USB and HDMI monitors and you're just, you're great. Some some part of me wishes these had existed back in the day. I guess I can give you a little video test here. I don't know why the audio is coming so light on the monitor, if that's interesting. But yeah, you can see it does video pretty well. This monitor will only do 1080, but we'll throw 1080 at it. And this is what the laser just looks like on the video on any display. So yeah, works pretty great. Anyway, I'll have a link to this in the sticky comment and what should I do with this thing? Let me know. Um, I have some ideas. I have two or three of these now that'll run 12 volt and I am I have one solid idea, but I could use some more. So let me know because I want to put these things to use. Well, actually, you know what? I want to see if, how easy it is to get into the BIOS. These Intel ones, it's usually pretty easy. The ones that have AMD chips, AMD chips, are usually a little more difficult to get into. They just don't give you a lot of post time. These ones, I usually don't have trouble getting in. All right, let me try something. I want to see if we can dual boot Linux on here real easy, but I got to get into that boot menu first. So uh, I'll be back. Okay, I got in. Uh, I had to do a trick where you do a shutdown command in a command prompt as administrator and it got right in. That almost always works on these Intel ones. It has never worked for me on the AMD ones. I take that back, it worked once. But anyway, we're in the BIOS, so we're gonna go ahead and change our boot order. I want a USB device first. That'll work. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug a bootable Linux installer here on the back. If I can untangle the cables and make room. That's the one problem with these mini PCs is all the ports are so close together. There we go. All right, so F4 to save and exit. Yes. Uh, gosh dang it, it didn't work. Okay, there we go. Man, this monitor is really dusty. Sorry about that. I just noticed in the corners, it's been in the basement for like a year and a half. Um, I don't really use it. It's, it's just kind of a backup monitor. I, I can't throw away monitors that work. And this is like a really nice one. And this base weighs a ton, so it's, it's, it's just nice. But I've apparently quite neglected it. And this is taking a minute. This, uh, this thumb drive is not the best thumb drive in the world that I'm using. It's... It's been around for quite a while. There we go. Well, she's thinking about it, huh? Editing Ryan's gonna have a lot of stuff to cut. <laughs> what do you guys like to have for dinner? While we're, while we're sitting here, tell me in the comments. Um, my wife's gonna be home late tonight, so I have to take care of my own dinner when I'm done here. I don't know what I want. Got some ideas though. I might have to just have some chicken tenders or something. She uh, got a bunch of chicken, pretty cheap coupon sales, whatever. Last time we went to the grocery, I might just make some of that, get some spicy mustard out. It sounds pretty good, actually. Okay, here we go. We'll go in kind English. Yeah, we're just gonna go through most of this. Oh, an update is available for the installer. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and fly through all this and we'll just go ahead and jump to seeing if it uh, works. All right, we're to the point where we can restart now. Oh, gotta remove the installation media, don't I? I'm curious to see if it actually is going to give us the boot menu or if it's just going to go straight into Windows. It's just going to go straight into Windows. So we're just going to do shutdown slash r slash fw slash t space zero. And that should get us into the BIOS. And we'll try changing the boot order again, I guess.
Yeah, so it just wants to go to the Windows Boot Manager. It's not seeing the Ubuntu one. Ah, here we go. So we're gonna set Ubuntu first there. Change the timing there. So we're gonna save changes and exit. Let's see what happens. There we go. So I can go to the Windows Boot Manager or I can go to Ubuntu. Great, cool. Now we have Ubuntu set up. That's nice if you wanna run Linux on one of these things. They, they do make a nice little like Intel based Linux computer. For the price, you could almost build a comparable Raspberry Pi 5. I think this would be a little bit cheaper and then you're gonna have a little bit more IO and then a full size HDMI port. Plus you have the ability to run Windows and not like emulate it or something. So you may have a use for that, but yeah, we've got it all set up and everything. And no, I don't really want Ubuntu Pro. Sure. But yeah, you kind of get the point. We've got Ubuntu on here. Pretty cool. Anyway, uh, I will link to this in the sticky comment in the description, and I'll see you guys in the next video.